What are the origins of insurance? Where did it start? Where did it come from? We're going to answer that question as we take a look at the history of insurance today. What's up? You're watching Tita Talks, non-life insurance discussions with me, once again, your favorite Tito Miguel, who loves to make non-life insurance discussions easier to understand for both agents and clients. Maganda, 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 magandang Wednesday po sa atin lahat. And thank you so much for tuning in to this extra, extra special session of Tito Talks. We're going to do away with the technicalities for now, and we are going to take a look at a historical background to the forerunners of insurance. And you'll be surprised by what you find out, though, because insurance looked really, really, really different <laughs> back in the day as compared to what it is in the modern age. But before we get into that, please, if you do like this type of content and you appreciate what I do as a content creator on YouTube, please consider subscribing to our channel as it helps our channel grow and reach more people. Now let's get into our topic for today then, shall we? Now with insurance today, you have large companies that provide numerous types of products, property, motor car, personal accident, and all of these various products have their own backstories in which to them. But if you move further back into time, way before these companies, way before the first agent, way before the first policy, people have already been worried about risk. People have already been worried about losing their valuables, their items, their personal belongings, and their cargo. Which is why it's interesting to note that marine insurance was known as the first type of insurance. Merchants way, way back in the day who would rather send their cargoes over ships to reach various areas, to reach various countries, were running the risk of pirates, bad weather, um, poor sailing, mutinies, theft from their own people. And this is why several forms of security were developed during back in the day. Now, it was during the 1800s that the first fixed system of risk management was ever developed. Yes, yes, yes. It was during 1800 BC or BCE um, that the first recognizable system of risk management was uh, was implemented. We, well, I'm pretty sure they didn't call it risk management at that time. In fact, it had a more unique name. They called them bottom rebonds. Let me say that in one breath, bottom re bonds. Now, yeah, that does sound a lot different, right? Now, bottom rebonds during that time were widely used by Babylonian and Chinese merchants who used ships to transport their goods. Now, these bottom rebonds are not exactly insurance policies, but rather they were loans. Loans that were taken out with the ship used as capital. Now, the merchants or the ship owners, the people with the cargo on these ships would take out these loans from other financial establishments, other lenders, other vendors, who would then charge them an interest rate if the ship arrived safely. So that means if you bought a bottom rebond during that time and you didn't lose your ship and your cargo arrived safely, you would have to pay back that loan with a larger amount of interest. And that's where the profit of the vendor comes from. However, if your ship did not arrive, it sunk, got capsized, it got stolen, got destroyed, then you're absolved of the loan. So it was a pretty easy system that transferred the risk from the ship owner then to the loan giver. So both of them uh, the uh, both of them were in part are in a partnership where in one party absorb the risk of another if in case something bad happens and the ship owner would be liable to pay the loan if everything worked out just as fine and this was the earliest form of uh, of risk management way way back during those times and it was this type of system that actually gave rise to a more solid a more written a more concrete foundation of risk management which came about not 
um, not too far along ahead in time. Now, if botany was started during the 1800s, the concept or the most concrete policy or the most the most actual or the earliest type of policy that we've seen that really talks about risk was created during the time of King. Yeah, he was a king. Was during the time of King Hammurabi during during 1792 to 1750 BCE, a little bit way after the bottom rebonds have started. Now, for those of you who are a little bit confused here, King Hammurabi was known as the ruler of Mesopotamia during that particular period of time. He came from a long list of other emperors which were already occupying the region at that time. And if you're not familiar with what Mesopotamia is, it's actually the area in between the Tigris and Euphrates River, which is more commonly known today as Iraq. So way, way before, before it was called Iraq, it was known as the Kingdom of Mesopotamia. And King Hammurabi was known as a Babylonian king who ruled over this particular area and brought about a lot of advancements in society, technology, as well as the arts. One of the most notable contributions of this period is known as the Code of Hammurabi. Now, with that being said, this Code of Hammurabi isn't just, uh, isn't just important to insurance, but it is also important to law, as it is also one of the earliest recorded documents dictating a rule of land. Yes, one of the earliest as well. So how can a law or a code have anything to do with insurance? Well, that's where things start to get interesting because in this very code of Hammurabi, there were provisions in the law that actually provided benefits for landowners, merchants, bankers who lost their profits, who lost their wealth due to thieves, burglary, and other forms of losses. And there were provisions in the law that states if we cannot catch the thief that stole your goods and you're left without anything, the state, the kingdom, the government will pay you for your losses, which were in turn the very first insurance claims there ever were on planet Earth. So as you can see here, there wasn't exactly a policy to speak of because being a resident of that kingdom automatically made you a client and therefore your policy was actually the law. And during that time, there were no underwriters, there were still no agents, and of course, there were no agents as well as the state. The kingdom was the only insurer, and they did it without the necessity of profit. But still, there was an element of risk reduction. If you lost your wealth because of unexpected circumstances and you can no longer retrieve your wealth, the government, the state, the kingdom got your back. But it is a few several years after this time that insurance suddenly started to get more and more sophisticated. And before we move later on into the, um, into the later years wherein you have underwriters, wherein you had um, insurance companies and whatnot, there was one very important development that revolutionized the way that we look at insurance. It was in the 1650s that a certain mathematician known as Blaise Pascal, and if you're not familiar with who this guy is, he's pretty popular in math classes as he was the inventor of the first usable calculator as well as many other things. But in terms of insurance, he's more known for his other contribution, which was the foundation of the study of probability. Now, this study was began in 1650s, wherein he started corresponding with another mathematician known as Pierre de Fermat. Now, their, their discussions or their exchanges, their letters in between them, talked about computations about gambling. Of all things that lead to security, it came from... <laughs> a discussion about a terrible vice, gambling. But yes, take a look at this. It was when Pascal was looking into dice rolling, which was one of the more popular forms of gambling back then. He took a look at dice rolling and he found out that there was a particular predictable pattern that could be expressed mathematically to dictate the chances of certain dice rolls happening with the more rolls you take out. And it was this 
idea that gave birth to the science known as probability, which then relates to how well you can predict the chances of something happening, which, as you all know, is a pretty big deal in insurance. Armed with this code, more and more people in the European side started to begin appreciating accepting risk on their behalf in exchange for a profit. Now, with thanks to Pascal's foundation of probability, people now found it easier to, to, to calculate their chances if something was a good investment or not. And this is where Lloyd's of London comes in uh, during the 17th century. And for those of you who are confused, the 17th century started in between 1601 to 1700. And that's referred to as the, uh, that's referred to as the 17th century. It was during this time, during the later part of the 17th century, that a certain coffee shop known as Lloyd's Coffee Shop, which was owned by a Mr. Edward Lloyd, makes sense, um, started to gain notoriety for attracting merchants, businessmen, bankers, and ship owners. Now, although it was a coffee shop, it served more than, uh, it served more than a caffeine-related purpose. People who would meet at this coffee shop would actually talk about the possibility of doing business with one another. Ship owners with, uh, with shipments, merchants with shipments would usually talk with potential investors, with potential clients who are interested in insuring the cargo. I'll pay you a premium, but if I lose my cargo, you have to replace the cargo for me. You get to keep my premium if my cargo arrives safely. So people would talk about these sorts of things at the coffee shop. And whenever an agreement was made, every individual that agreed to take the risk, accept the premium from the merchant or the ship owner would sign their name underneath the risk, underneath the name of the ship, underneath the name of the risk. This is where the term underwriter came from, as the, um, as the people who took on the risk had to write their names underneath the risk, hence the term underwriter. Now, with that being said, this is where most of the fast tracking of insurance began. So still with marine insurance, more and more people sought business there, more and more deals were struck under this particular coffee shop, which actually allowed the coffee shop to start its own publication known as Lloyd's List. And this list contained documents, requirements, contact details of all the individuals who were willing to underwrite certain risks. And as the years went on, as more business was conducted at the, at the coffee shop, it now evolved into what we see of it today, which is now known as Lloyd's of London, more popularly just known as Lloyd's. And you'll be surprised to know, Lloyd's of London is not an insurance company, but an insurance marketplace. You step into Lloyd's of London, no, you're not going to find one company there. You're going to find a bunch of underwriters to which you can talk about insuring your needs. So it's more of a marketplace instead of a competitor. And with that being said, insurance has found its way and has modified itself to adjust to the current standards of today's market. Now you've got different types of insurance, travel insurance, marine insurance, personal accident insurance, motor car insurance, and everything fell into place from that point. Now let's get on with our question for today then, shall we? Now, um, this question shall introduce us to our session or to our topic this coming Friday. And I think you're going to like this one because it's another, it's another type of insurance. Is the electronic equipment in a property insured under a fire policy or an engineering policy? Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you like this video. Leave me a like. And if you do find this type of content useful to you, please... Don't be afraid to leave a subscribe on my channel as it will help me grow. So I hope to see you this coming Friday. Once again, this is your favorite, Tito Miguel, always saying, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.